Hi everyone, and welcome to AutoCAD. My name is Ari, and I'm an AEC Technical Specialist and AutoCAD Professional with Digital Drafting Systems. Today, we're going to be going over hatches, and in particular, annotative hatches. Let's also look at some of the settings that we should use when we set up our sheets in our drawings. So if we want to use annotative objects, such as these dimensions right here in front of us and this text right here, then we'll need to set up a few things. First, we'll go to our status bar right down here, and we can click on our customization button. Looks like three horizontal lines. And I'd like to turn all of my options on. The options in particular that we need are the annotation visibility and the annotation scale. Here are the two functions, and we need to make sure that they're turned on. So right now, show annotation objects is on, and every time I switch to a different scale, any annotative objects will get that scale as well. So right now, I'm using scales right here, and I can see that I have 1 to 100 set right now. If I switch to one that's not being used or hasn't been used yet, let's say 1 to 10, we can see that our annotative objects have changed, but our non-annotative objects, just like this hatch right here, have not changed. Let's click on this dimension and let's see some properties. We can go here and click on it under properties and look at the annotative scale. Let's click on it once and then click on this button that appears. And we can see a list of all the different scales that this object is associated with. So every time a new scale is set in model space, this object will get it. So it just got the 1 to 10 scale. Let's try one more scale. Let's switch it to 1 to 2. And now let's click on the object. And there it is in the list. It has now gotten another new scale. And we can also delete scales. So I can delete these scales that are not quite typical. There we go. Excellent. And we have the other scales in the list that we can leave. Excellent. Now we can change our scale back. Let's go back to 1 to 100. And there we go. So how do these scales work? Well, first of all, I made a dimension style. So I went to the Annotate tab right here, and I went to our Dimensions panel, and I clicked on this arrow right here. This is our Dimension Style Manager, and we can see all the different styles here on the left side. Right now I have Annotated, and this one has a symbol next to it that is also telling us that it is actually annotated, not just in name. We can click on it, and we can click on Modify. Starting from Lines, we can see all different kinds of options to adjust the way that our dimensions and our text will look. So under Lines, I have some of these settings. 1 16th seems to be pretty good for a... Um, baseline spacing, extend beyond dim lines, and offset from origin. Under symbols and arrows, I set my arrow size to 330 seconds. I could make it a little bigger or smaller, but I like everything to be close to 330 seconds or a multiple of. That's pretty standard. Um, you can make automatic center marks if you want, or you can click on none so that they don't appear, but you can still get a radial or um, diameter dimension for a circle. And we also have different settings here. And if we go to text, we can see that I've set the text height to 330 seconds. This means that no matter what, in paper space, regardless of what scale is in the viewport, your text will measure in real life at 330 seconds of an inch. This is the power of an annotative dimension style. That means that no matter what scale it is, we'll always see our text at the same height and everything will be standard and readable. Under fit, I have a few options that I've modified here. I've gone to my text placement and I want my text to always be over the dimension line without a leader attaching it to the line. So this option is preferred for me. You could have it beside if you wanted to, but I like it to be over. And my scale for dimension features is annotative as well. That makes sure that that's checked on. Under primary units, I've set my unit format to architectural. My precision is at 164th. I could put it up to 1 256th. It's pretty good. And I don't like to suppress my zero inches. So I've turned this option uh, off. This way you can see in my dimensions that we see the zero inches even though there are no inches. If I turn this on, you would just see 20 feet. And we have alternate units and tolerances if we need to go down that route. For now we don't, so we're just gonna click OK. We're gonna say set current, and now all of our options are ready. And so all I need to do now is make sure that my dimensions are associated with that dimension style right here in properties, and it looks like they are. So they're all set under annotative. And if they weren't, you can see what happens as I'm switching between the other styles. You can see how things are changing based on the different text heights and different um, settings that we've set in our dimension style. So annotative is correct. Excellent. Now let's look at our hatches. We do have this first hatch, and we know this is not annotated, and we can see it's not because this button here has not been checked on. So we, have, we only have an associative hatch, so that means that it basically went inside of these lines and didn't surpass them. So it's using these lines as a guideline. That's why we don't see 
the actual grips on the hatch and we can't snap to it. If I was actually to click on associated and not make it associated, now we can see that I can modify this hatch. I can make it bigger or smaller, for example. So it's not associating itself with lines anymore. It's now its own independent object. But when you make a hatch, you can use associative to make it quite quickly. You just click on the inside and it fills itself in. So that's quite useful. All right, and we can see here that the scale of the hatch is set to one, and we are using the AR dash H B O N E, the H bone one. It looks basically like a typical brick pattern, a two by four by six. And now let's look at our other hatch pattern. Here, the hatch is associative and it's annotative, so that's why it doesn't have grips, but it is changing itself based on the different scale that I'm using. And what I've done arbitrarily is, I or not arbitrarily, excuse me, on purpose, uh, ahead of time, I have actually set the scale of this hatch to 1 16th of an inch, or 0 0.0125. And so this allows this hatch to be about the right size for a 1 to 100 scale. It's also pretty good to use for 1 8th of an inch equals a foot scale. You can see how it changed a little bit. Our text also changed in size just a little bit. Let's go to a more drastic scale, 3 quarters of an inch. Now we can see that basically it's nearly solid, and we can see that the bricks have changed. But if I was to print a section of this, you could measure the bricks, and they would always measure the same no matter what scale we're using. So I'm going to go back to 1 to 100, and that is roughly the right size of the bricks measured almost uh, in real time on the paper. That's a pretty good scale to use. All right, and now you can see the power of these hatches. What we can do is we can have several different kinds of hatches, and they can all have different kinds of textures associated with them. But you don't need to make a hatch for a different size of, or portion of an area. It's always going to measure the same size, even if you change the scale of your sheet. Thank you very much for watching. Hope that was a good one. Once again, my name is Ari, and I'm with Digital Drafting Systems, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.